Um, so excited, excited to be here um, with it. And, and maybe as, as we get started, before we kind of go into a demonstration, we take maybe about 25, 30 minutes to kind of give you an overview of, of what Concur looks like, what Concur feels like, right, what that user experience is going to be. I can't tell you all of the specifics around the implementation, what it's going to look like until we get to that part, and we're going to start the implementation process with it, but want to share that for you. But maybe as a show of hands, maybe you guys let me know, just so I know kind of, um, how many of you have traveled on behalf of the university, maybe in the last year, right, two years, okay. How many of you maybe fill out travel, or book travel, and fill out expense reports for other people? All right, so we kind of got a mix, right? We've got a mix of travelers and a mix of, of delegates in that process, and, and as we go through it, what I want to do is, is today kind of go through a day in the life of, I think that's kind of the easiest way to get a feel for everything that Concur can do. And, and I want to introduce you to Kelly. Kelly could be a, a faculty member uh, at the university. She could be a professor. She could be a delegate, right, that is managing travel and expenses on behalf of another individual. Um, she may be an approver, right, that she's approving reports because they tie to her index or they tie to her FOFO. Right, or the fund and grant that's associated to it. And in this case, Kelly's a, a mobile user. So we want to go through what her process looks like a little bit from a request to travel booking to mobile and then into just more kind of refinement in the expense side. And we're going to take a little bit of time to do that and then we're going to open it at the end to, to kind of walk through and talk about some questions or open it up for questions that you might have. Um, so travel authorization, you might know it as pre-trip approval, trip request, travel request. It comes in a lot of different names and it forms with universities that I work with. But at the end of the day, right, it is a form that you have to fill out. And you have a form today in your process that you have to fill out. Where am I going? When am I leaving? When am I coming back? Right? You're adding some information so individuals within the university get visibility to the dollars that are going to impact their budget. And it's also about validating that there's budget available and marking once a request is approved for travel an encumbrance. Right? So it's kind of starting this whole process that exists within, the, within it, so getting that. But we also extend it a little bit further with concurrent to risk mitigation. If you're traveling internationally, or even if you're traveling domestically, would you want to know if there's any potential risks of where you're traveling, any political upheaval, right? Is there a virus outbreak that's occurring? So we're starting to leverage that platform to educate, in this case, Kelly, related, uh, related to, uh, to the trip and, and to the travel. So for Kelly, what, what she appreciates when we're talking about requests is first when she logs in, it's one door into the suite of solutions. It's probably gonna be single sign-on, click a button and boom. I'm in Concur, and I can see a number of different things. I've got access for booking travel, communication from the university, maybe that conference that I had to cancel, I couldn't go to, I booked a trip, but I couldn't go to it, so I've got an unused ticket, right, that's sitting out there that I'm, I want visibility to. And I'm receiving notifications, or Kelly's receiving notifications when she has new actions to take. Are there new reports for her to review and approve? On a daily basis from J.P. Morgan Chase, we're getting a card feed of all of the card transactions, travel and non-travel related. So we can let Kelly know, hey, just as an FYI, you've got card transactions that are 15 days old. Don't forget to go ahead and go in and reconcile those transactions related to it. Um, it's one place to go for cash advances and for, for cash reimbursements as well. So as Kelly's coming in, right, in kind of her day in the life of, right, she's got some authorization requests or those pre-trip approvals. And when she looks at it within Concur, she can see here that she's got some in a couple of different statuses. At the top, that recruitment trip to Atlanta, um, she hasn't taken it yet. She's created a request or a pre-trip authorization. It's gotten approved, and now it says book. She's gonna come back to that a little bit later. Uh, she sees here that trip to Chicago, it's all set, ready to expense. Right, so she's gonna, gonna take that and ultimately put that on a report, but right now she's focused on her, on her research trip to Madagascar, kind of studying some of the water quality issues uh, out there in, in water conservation to help them uh, in, in, in further those studies. Now, like we said, it's just a form. She's gonna fill out right, what the report name is, probably when, when is she leaving, 
When is she coming back? Um, she might add in, right, maybe type of travel or the purpose. Again, these are configurable and things we'll be working with Bridgewater as we go through the implementation to define specific to the university. Um, but she also has the ability if she needs a cash advance um, within that trip to put that within that travel authorization process so it's captured and can then be routed for review and approval and ultimately issued uh, and, and recovered in, uh, in, in the process. But the one piece that Kelly really appreciates when we were talking about that risk mitigation and duty of care, she's never been to Madagascar. She doesn't know. Right? What's, what's the political stability in Madagascar? Are there virus outbreaks? Um, you know, something where we heard, uh, I think, a year and a half ago, like Zika, right, in, in Africa. Things of that nature. Concurus and Bridgewater are starting to provide her that visibility even before she goes on that trip. Right? So now she knows kind of what to expect at a high level within that from a health perspective, from a crime perspective, a personal safety perspective. And if those events change, and the risk level increases to where she's traveling to, in this case, Madagascar, Concur is going <coughs> to systemically generate a new notification to her, giving her the update, right? So maybe if there was uh, a, a virus outbreak, you know, in a month from now, she'll receive that communication, and she might, uh, might, might not have been aware of it. Um, so really kind of helping mitigate uh, some of that risk travel uh, for travel and, and helping her have a sense of security uh, and safety uh, when she's, uh, before she travels. Now, right, we go into the second part. Oftentimes when you're filling out a request, you say, well, this is where I'm leaving from. Right? I need to leave from Boston and I need to go to Madagascar. I need an air, car, and hotel. All of the things that you would contact Greg for and his team. And what we're doing with Incur is we're really an extension to Greg's team, to the services that you provide. You can still reach out to Greg, we'll travel through Greg, but we're providing an alternative option to leverage an online booking tool and leverage that request to drive the booking process under um, Greg's guidance and kind of configuration of how he wants that to work. So you can identify all of that information of where you're going, when you're coming back, if you need car, a hotel, or air related to it, and that starts populating the expenses. So my air, car, hotel, the estimated amounts related to it, if I was going to a conference, right, and I need to add a conference fee associated to it, I could. I can go in and attach the PDF of the conference so that there's visibility as it goes through the <laughs> workflow, but then take all of those charges, one or multiple charges, and allocate them to a different fund Focal index, grant, right? All the things that drive the workflow within Bridgewater, uh, Bridgewater's approval process. But what Kelly appreciates in the doing that, not only having the ability to change maybe from a default, right, fund and grant, and again, these would be your labels, but that she has funds and grants that she allocates to all of the time. Maybe 90% of her allocations are always this way. What she wants to do is, I just want to say, take these 10 charges, allocate it, <coughs> get done, and gone. I don't want to allocate it 10 separate times, right? So it allows her to create a favorites. She goes through it once, and if it's a common allocation, Kelly can mark it as a favorite, so the next time she comes in, I want to take these 10 charges, hit favorites, boom, done, right? move on to the next step related to it. And that's all part of that pre-trip authorization or approval uh, pre-trip request process within it. So again, request really just simply kind of being a form that's out there to capture it where we're doing the uh, validation checks of fund availability, we're doing the encumbrance, and we're tying in that starting process of duty of care, creating visibility and awareness to safety in the situations where uh, your faculty and staff may be traveling. Make sense so far in that process? Okay, so now we're gonna touch on travel, right? And, and I've said this to every group and I will continue to say it. Um, I am very impressed and I've never worked with a university with such a robust, sophisticated travel program that you have in place today is really fortunate um, within that. And what we are doing from a travel perspective, if you've ever booked online, right, for your own personal travel, we're providing an online extension to Greg's team. So you can still call Greg and his team and they can book travel for you. Or just like you have an experience when you book your own online travel, 
is do it through the online booking tools. Pulling from the same resources and channels that Greg's team is with any of the negotiated rates and the discounts. Um, and it's all under the eyes and control uh, within, uh, within the booking process that are set forth. So what does that look like when we talk about that process uh, with Concur Travel? Again, anything that is booked through Concur, Greg's team has visibility to and vice versa. So if I book it through Greg's team, I log into Concur, I can see all of my itinerary information. I book it through Concur, I pick up the phone, and I talk to one of Greg's agents, they can see that itinerary information and support me. Right, so there's this combination or direct relationship between the two, but once that pre-trip authorization gets approved, I now have that ability to say, book it. Remember when we said we were leaving from this location, we need air, car, and hotel? You're just filling out a form which drives an online booking tool. Same questions that Greg is probably going to ask you, right? And, and the team, where are you leaving? Where are you going? When do you want to come back? So they can go in and key all of that data in Right? You've already entered it in there, now the system is doing it automatically, just as if you went out to an Expedia uh, or any of those <laughs> leisure tools. And by chance, how many of you guys have booked on those leisure tools, like Expedia, Priceline, right? And then, have you guys ever found a really great fare that was so unbelievable, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm gonna get this fare, and you click book, and then it comes back, and it says, oh, we're sorry, right. that rate isn't available, right? It happens because what they're doing is they're saying, you know what, this is what you're searching. I'm gonna look back 24 hours. 24 hours ago, here's the price I found. I'm gonna present it to you. It's only when you hit book do I gotta validate is that price still valid. What we're doing within Concur is we're sourcing it in real time. So when we present a fare, at that point in time is the fare that is available and it is available within it. We're applying negotiated rates and discounts that Greg would do in the booking process on behalf of the university. And we're booking through outside channels. So things like Southwest, I don't know if you guys have ever flown Southwest and you know their model is different. If you call Greg's team and they have to book Southwest, guess what? They're going to Southwest's website to do it because Southwest doesn't put their content in the same channel as the major airlines. Part of Concur is our relationship is being able to bring in all of the Southwest content. So just as if you were going to their website, it's all accessible within Concur. We're not punching you to Southwest. Your whole experience is within the Concur application to see that. Um, I don't have the example here, but we also pull an Amtrak. Um, so rail side by side with air if you're traveling on the Eastern Corridor related to it. But the whole idea is to keep it quick, simple, and easy for you as a traveler, right? You already kind of know, what, where, where am I going? I gotta make the best choices time-wise, cost-wise related to it. I wanna make sure we're getting the negotiated rates and discounts to it and still have that ability to be able to change my search and have a very leisure experience in that kind of corporate university booking process, right? So now I can go ahead and view the fares, identify what it is that I want, make that selection and choice, and move forward. Like I said at the beginning, with any online booking tool, they all do the same thing. They book your air, your car, and your hotel. Um, the things that make Concur different is, is being able to pull outside content, like Amtrak, Southwest, when we talk internationally, we're talking about a whole slew of airlines that be able to bring in outside content to those different distribution models and to apply the negotiated rates and discounts that Bridgewater and Procurement have worked so hard to get into that booking process and still right, be provided as an extension of the great services that Greg's team is, is providing from a travel booking process and giving you that choice and that option right, of, of booking it. Um, so we've gone in and we've booked our travel related to it. Now Kelly's got to go out and she's got to do the hard part. She's got to go out on the road and she's got to travel. And travel, right, isn't always fun. Stuff happens when we travel. I call it travel friction. Um, not everything goes uh, as planned. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure there's a little leg here on my mobile device. Uh, but some of the things that Kelly appreciates about uh, Concur and when she's traveling is that it's providing her notifications and updates. So Jennifer talked about this virtual administrative assistant, right? With all of that data, no matter how it's booked, it's in Concur. And now we can start providing Kelly information to reduce the travel friction. Did your gate change? 
right? When you land, what does everybody do? They pick up their phone. Wouldn't it be cool if I picked up my phone and it said, hey, Tony, guess what? Just like it says on the bottom, you're landing uh, in Terminal A, gate A5, your baggage claim is four. I missed the announcement when we were coming down because I had my right, earphones on and was watching the movie, but now I know I can get off the plane and go right there. Uh, the communications that we provide at Concur are oftentimes faster than the airlines are making the updates to their consumers. And I'll share a couple of stories with you on this, right, is um, if you ever want to get stranded in Newark, New Jersey, I'm sure that with everybody is the place to go six times. I was sitting there, my flight was supposed to leave at six o'clock. At five o'clock, I got a notification from Concur that my flight was delayed. 10 minutes later, the gate agent announced it and the board was updated. That happened again at six o'clock, at seven o'clock, at nine o'clock, at 10 o'clock, and I knew it was happening because the board was getting red. And then at 11 o'clock, I got the notification from Concur, Tony, your flight's canceled. I knew it was gonna happen because I can the weather pattern, right, the whole East Coast. But I got it 10 minutes before. And what that let me do is book probably one of the last rooms in Newark, New Jersey, so I didn't have to sleep on a mat. And if you've ever traveled and you had that experience, right, you know how personal it is and that you don't want that to happen. And, and that's why things like a virtual administrative assistant are so beneficial for me. Now, Kelly, when she's traveling, right, as well, likes the fact that Concur and Bridgewater are helping keep her safe. Um, so when she's out on the road and traveling, like let's say she was maybe in <coughs> Ecuador, right, doing a study and an earthquake happened or an event happened, right, on a major scale, Concur's triggering systemic <coughs> notifications to let her know. This might be right before she travels. So maybe she hasn't even left yet. I want to know there was an earthquake in Ecuador or something happened. Uh, Liz and I were talking about, and the question came up earlier domestically, right? You know, can, does it do it domestically? Last year we were in New York and about eight blocks away from us, there was a driver that drove up on the sidewalk and started plowing through people. It was all the time with the protests going on in South Carolina and North Carolina. Concur gave us a notification. We had no idea when we walked out of that meeting or would have had no idea when we walked out of that meeting that that was occurring eight blocks away. You know, so for us, whether it's domestic or whether it's international, we live in a whole new world, right? And those types of notifications just help me be a little bit more alert, a little bit more sensitive to my own safety and security <coughs> when I'm traveling. And it allows me the ability to leverage my mobile device to communicate directly back to <coughs> Kelly, in this case, to communicate directly to Bridgewater if she needs help and assistance. Let's say she fell down and broke her leg, right? I can use my mobile device and communicate right back to Bridgewater University for support with uh, related, uh, related to it. Or to have, right, simple messaging, whether it's through the mobile device, that right, Bridgewater could send those types of messaging, like, hey, I see that you're traveling. If you ever need help and support, just respond with this text with Mayday. Uh, and we'll reach out back out to you. So now Kelly's out on the road, she's traveling. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that she likes is everything's in her pocket. You can go to the iStore or the Google Store. Uh, I think we're about a 4.8 rating with over 600,000 um, reviews. Uh, I think Jennifer mentioned 700 universities. We've got 45,000 clients. JP Morgan Chase, who's your card provider and all the major banks, pharmaceuticals, they all leverage Concur. We're very strong within the higher education community as well. I'm uh, very fortunate with that. But what a lot of people love is that mobile app. It gives me one place to go to access all of my trips and itineraries. So whether it's booked through Greg's team or I book it through Concur Travel, it's on my mobile device. I have access to my expenses and approvals, but what Kelly really likes is that she can get rid of paper. In the bottom left-hand corner, there's a camera icon that says expense it. So now she can go ahead, take a picture of the receipt, and leveraging OCR, or optical character recognition, occurs intelligently lifting the data off the receipt, the date, the amount, the vendor, the location. And with all of the clients that we've seen globally, we've probably seen every receipt at least once. We know this is a parking receipt. So let's pre-map it to the parking expense in your expense report for you. And we can see that the last four digits on that receipt match up to the card in your wallet. So let's automatically match that receipt to your expense charge that's going to come through from the card provider so you don't have to do it. So I'm just validating that and I'm done and I move on in that, uh, in that process. Now the other thing is, is mileage. Uh, Jennifer talked about that, being able to track my mileage. I can do this online within the application. 
or maybe when I got to the airport, I might want to go in and be able to put right, the address or the drive that I had and capture that directly within Google Maps. So I can do it at the time that it happens or right when I have the pockets of time so I don't forget. That's always my problem as a traveler. I forget, like if I don't do it, two weeks from now am I gonna remember if I put my mileage in for that visit to Bridgewater State? I do it at the airport and I don't forget and it's there. Um, same thing with it is it's all connected to the same system. So as I add that information in, if I'm leveraging a delegate, instantly the delegate has access to it online with it. We were talking earlier about University of San Francisco and they did a, a case study or a video with one of their um, faculty members that was in the Brazilian rainforest doing research. And she was talking about the best part about it was, was as I was incurring expenses, I was taking pictures of the receipts. And when I got back, my report was already done because my delegate had access to it the whole time and was doing it along the way, right? So the report really kind of built itself uh, out in that process. Other things within there, um, you'll see that you have access to all of your charges, your card charges, the photos of the receipts that are coming through, the ability to create expense reports, uh, expenses manually, or to create your expense reports from your mobile device, and the ability to review and approve expense reports from your mobile device. So as a manager, having access to those travel requests, pre-trip authorizations, expense reports at any point in time. I can visually see what needs my uh, attention, drill into the details, and just online I can see everything that has taken place, any of the allocations, the receipts associated to it, if there's any policy guidance that the university wants me to be aware of related to it, and access to the receipts. So now, I don't have to go online, I can review it, approve it, or send it back and say, hey, let us make these updates and resubmit, and I'll approve it, right, in that process. It's all tied to one system. So mobile, making it quick, simple, and easy, getting rid of the paper in that process, leveraging the OCR capabilities, tracking mileage, pretty much everything I can do online, I can do from a mobile device. But what does that look like from the online application, right? So for Kelly, when she comes back, maybe she uses um, to occur a number of different ways, right? To getting photos of the receipts, adding her mileage, she's not doing, all of that, every user is gonna find a different way to use Concur. She could hit create new report and start there. Or she could say, you know what, here's all of the charges that need a home, right? All of my card charges, my cash charges related to it. And visually, she could see a receipt's already attached. It's a card charge, it's a cash reimbursement, the expense type's already done. Taking those charges, and bring them to an expense report. And much like that pre-trip authorization, I have a report header, right? And this would be my trip to Chicago, and I could fill that out. Again, this is all stuff that's being designed or will be designed during implementation, what's required, what's optional in the process. Um, for those of you who have traveled, any of you guys travel and have to do like GSA travel allowance per diems, right? Within it, you gotta go to the GSA website and all of that kind of tough, right? It's time consuming. I gotta go to the website, I gotta know when did I leave, where did I leave from, what time did I leave, right? Where did I go? All the information that exists on your itinerary should be leveraged. Why do you want a connected ecosystem? Because now I can go ahead and say, take my itinerary, bring it in, that's the information I need for my travel allowance or my per diem, and move on to the next step. Right? Fill in that information because Concur is looking on a nightly basis to the GSA websites, the Konos and the Okonos tables for any updates. Now the only thing I need to do as a user is say, you know what, that conference provided a lunch, the system automatically recalculates it for me, and I move on forward into that process. So the more I leverage the technology that Bridgewater is bringing forth, the easier my life becomes, the easier my delegate's life becomes in that process. I become an observer to the expense report, practically writing itself in that step. How many of you guys have had to itemize a hotel bill? Break out the per night cost, right? Uh, taxes, movies, uh, incidentals uh, related to it, right? Oftentimes, so, clicking on the wrong button. 
And oftentimes universities want to capture that because they need to know what was the total cost from a vendor negotiation standpoint or, or side point. One of the unique features within Concur is what we call an e-receipt. All right, so if you've ever gotten an email from the hotel or your airlines, here's your receipt and it's a PDF copy, this isn't it. This is a direct result of our relationships with the suppliers and literally getting the data before they hit the print button. So we're getting it in an electronic format that doesn't look like a receipt and re-rendering it to look like a receipt in the process. <coughs> what that means is, is that that information, right, from that piece of paper that comes under the door, can be used to auto-itemize your hotel. Break out your hotel per night cost, your taxes, your mini bar, your movies, your incidentals. You don't have to do it, right? So I don't have to do anything other than go in and validate the expenses that are related to those charges. Now, we talked about receipts. I can get receipts in through the e-receipts, through mobile. Uh, you can email receipts in. You can scan and attach. If you really wanted to, you could print out a barcoded cover page and fax in receipts. Uh, into, uh, into the solution. Um, if you're managing expenses, maybe more manually, again, user choice, I'm gonna go ahead and add one here for a taxi, and that taxi was an international expense, it was in London. Um, one thing to call out is we received the daily interbank exchange rate from Oanda, which is a popular exchange rate site, OANDA, um, and apply that to any of the cash expenses for that. If you used your personal card, it's still cash reimbursement, and if that exchange rate was incorrect, you could go ahead and make those appropriate adjustments within the system and, and say that. If you didn't have that, you know you're getting a pretty good, right, decent, fair exchange rate uh, coming through from Wanda. So now as a user, I just go in and I validate that. I mean, my cash expenses, any of my card charges, travel or non-travel, and submit the report into the workflow for a review. So kind of wrapping up, bringing it all together as part of the intelligent enterprise, right? This all should work together. Liz said it earlier that travel is an expense report waiting to happen. Why not bring the two together? I like to think of it as a Reese's peanut butter puff because I like chocolate and I like <coughs> peanut butter right? and it's all better together. But let's leverage the data from the travel, the booking information, the e-receipts, the card data that's coming in and simplify the process for the user and for the delegate uh, within in that, uh, within that. So I don't know, Jennifer, if there's anything that you have that you want to add or? I think that's it. Thanks, right. Tony. Well,